Hi guys. Hey guys, it's me Miranda. You might be wondering, Kara, why do you have your glasses on today? And the answer is that we are doing a full week of workouts. We'll do form tips. Basically just have a little debrief about this week of workouts, which I'm excited for. I love these. I feel like it's just like fun to work out for a week and then look back on it and be like, oh, sick. I did that. <laughs> I don't know why. Just fun. It's fun to like film it and record it. And also to just see how much like weeks change. I feel like a disclaimer too. I just want to say like, just cause I work out like this doesn't mean you need to. And if you do this exact same plan and this exact same week of workouts, it, we're not going to look the same because we each have unique genetics, hormones. We each have different, you know, experiences with training and or come from different fitness backgrounds. So our experiences are gonna be different, which is totally fine. Just to remind you that this is not like a Bible on how you should be working out. This is more just inspiration if you're looking for a little bit of fun or if you just wanna to try to spice up your workouts now and again. You'll notice when I do these week of workouts, they change a lot week over week. And it's because I am the type of person that I get bored. If my training routine is too similar every single week, I get really, really bored. If your goal is to like participate in a bodybuilding competition and lift really, really heavy weight and like shape your physique to look like a bodybuilder, you should probably be following like a hypertrophy style strength workout where you're focusing on like your main compound lifts, like some accessory movements and you're working on progressive overload every week to get stronger and stronger and build more muscle mass. And for me, that's just not my goal. I just like to work out because it's fun. It makes me feel good. And I like to stay strong. I like to feel fit. I like to feel like a little ninja warrior in the gym and just bounce all around. So because of that, I don't necessarily have to be following like a traditional bodybuilding split and I don't and I get kind of bored of it if I do it too often. So I have a couple workouts in here that you'll see are kind of like more traditional bodybuilding style workouts. And then I have other stuff like boxing, conditioning, just kind of like whatever makes me feel good. So take with that what you will. I hope that this gives you a little bit of inspiration. Um, I also should say that I'm not actively trying to bulk or cut. I'm an intuitive eater, so I just sort of eat what I want, when I want, and I'm not really trying to like shape my physique in any way. I'm just training because it makes me happy and it's good for my mental health. So with that, let's get into Monday. Monday this week was boxing. I always kind of, when I do boxing workouts, I like to kind of use a timer and I'll do like three minutes of boxing followed by like a minute of core. Three minutes of boxing, a minute of core. Kind of run it more like a circuit so that I'm getting my heart rate up and then I'm kind of using the core as a recovery. I'm just kind of like running a bunch of different combos. I have a couple combos that I love. I love a classic jab, 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 back hook, back hook. It's just a power combo for me. A one, 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 four, four. I also love mixing in some uppercuts. I'm trying really hard to work on my ones, threes, and fives, my, all of my front punches, because I'm just not as good at them. And then I, one of my favorite core movements on Boxing Day is a sit up to crunch. I think it's so much fun. It burns your core, it's so good. So I always kind of mix those in. I'll do those for like a minute and then go back to boxing. What it, what, what is that like Muhammad Ali said, like float like a butterfly, sting like a bee? That's me, babe. That's totally me. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but I'm also always trying to focus on footwork. So that's like a big part of boxing and something that I'm always trying to improve on is my footwork and just being really cognizant of driving power from my legs and my core and not just relying on my arms for the punches. It's very much like a full body exercise. And then today I actually, I boxed for about like 20 minutes on this day and then I switched and did a little bit of legs. So I did some Bulgarian split squats. I just did, at this point, I only had like 30 minutes left before I needed to go to work. So I just did three sets of like eight to 10 reps each leg. I like using a kettlebell for Bulgarians. That's such a tongue twister. Um, but you can use dumbbells, you can use a barbell, whatever you prefer. And then this move, this move is so fun. What you do basically, it's a reverse crunch to jump squat on a box. You are using your core to crunch your knees into your chest. And then you explode up into a jump squat sit back down, reverse crunch. So I kind of did a super set with that with kettlebell swings. So I just did like 45 seconds of each back to back with no rest. Then you rest after the kettlebell swings. I usually rest for like 30 seconds and then do the whole thing again. Then I wrapped up with sumo deadlifts. 
I sometimes put them at the end and it's because it's really challenging. I have already done a lot of exercises. So to really challenge myself, I put one of a, like a harder exercise at the end of the workout, but just trying to really still keep my form like crisp for that last exercise, it's a good challenge. Like, it's, I don't know, it's a fun way that I like to just sort of like apply progressive overload. Tuesday. On this Tuesday, I did back and buys. I pretty much do like just a full day dedicated to back because it's one of my favorite muscles to train, like my muscle groups, I should say. And it just makes me feel like a badass when I train back. So I give it a whole day because I love it so much. So I started with a seated row, but it was a divergent row. So I typically load it on, I load on plates and then I sit down and I like to do this unilaterally. So I do my right arm first and then my left arm. Typically do like four sets of six to eight reps on my right side and then four sets of six to eight reps on my left side. Sometimes I switch, so I'll do like right, left, right, left, right, left. And then I went right into straight arm pull downs. I love these. I always try to pause at the bottom of the movement and imagine pinching a pencil in between my shoulder blades at the bottom of the movement to just really focus on like activating my lats, tightening up my like rhomboids and just really using like my upper middle back too. Love those. I did like four sets of eight to 10 on this. And then you do a divergent lap pull down. So one arm at a time, same thing. I'm alternating right, left, right, left. So I did like four sets of 10 to 12 reps because it's like six to five to six reps on each side, basically. You want to imagine pulling your hands apart and then you want to think about bringing your elbows down to your sides to really use your lat. You can actually hold your lat while you do the exercise. That helps a lot for me with like mind muscle connection. After that, I did a cable bicep curl. I love cable bicep curls. They're my favorite. They're just like constant tension. They burn my biceps. I also have to go a lot lighter on cable bicep curls because they're just a lot more challenging for me. So I did like four sets of six to eight reps. I switched to a more like functional area of my gym. So I'll do like 30 seconds on the infinity rope pull, 30 seconds on the ski erg, back and forth, back and forth. And I rest after the ski erg. Like any other superset, you don't rest between the first two exercises. And the key with both of these exercises, especially the infinity rope pull, is to actually use your back to pull the weight. Then you're using your lats to pull that rope down. It's very much like a, you're kind of, I almost twist with it a little bit to sort of really activate my lats. Um, and then with ski erg, it's actually a really great full body exercise. I reach all the way up onto my toes, activate my calves, use my back to pull the ropes down, but then it's also a lot of leg because you're kind of squatting down as you pull. And then I do scap pull-ups. I did a neutral grip, just dead hang. And then you basically retract your scapula. So it's like pulling your shoulders down and back and you're just gently lifting yourself up into the air. You'll just see a little lift, relax. Landmine rows. I love landmine rows. They're so good. So I just use a classic like row attachment. I use smaller plates because it helps me with a better range of motion. The plate isn't like bumping into my chest as much. So I've been messing around with smaller plates. And then final exercise, bicep curls, classic. I did a hammer curl, so it's like a neutral grip. Your hands are facing each other. You can see at the end, my form is like slipping and I'm really using a lot of momentum, but try hard not to use momentum. That just always happens to me when my form slips and I'm getting tired. I start to use more momentum. Wednesday was quads and glutes. I've been playing around with quads and glutes more. I used to hate putting them together because I'm, it's hard for me to use my quads it's hard for me to use one and then the other without the other one taking over. So first exercise, classic barbell back squat. These are probably my least favorite exercise. I hate barbell back squats, but I'm like forcing myself to do them because I just wanna be better at them. Um, and I focus really hard on sort of imagining my feet spreading the floor as I push up. And that helps me really drive for my glutes instead of for my quads. And then next I did a classic reverse lunge I've been doing one leg first and then the other leg. So instead of alternating right, left, right, left, I do all of my right. So like six to eight reps on my right leg, six to eight le reps on my left leg. And then I go back to my right leg and back to my left leg. And for squats and lunges, I usually do four or five sets because I'm starting my workout with these. I have the most energy and I'm just like going for volume. Then I did the hip thrust. We have one of these like hip thrust machines. It makes it really easy to set up. So for these, I did more of like a CAS glute bridge. So a shorter range of motion. I'm not going all the way down. I'm kind of focusing on the top half of the thrust 
And I do six sets of hip thrusts, because I'm psycho. And I like to kill my glutes, I just like to light them on fire. Then, goblet squats. This is actually a really painful superset, so I'm sorry if you do end up trying this, because it's brutal. It's goblet squats directly into Bulgarian split squats. Goblet squat, forever one of my favorite exercises. I just feel them so much in my glutes, I love them. So I did like eight to 10 reps of the goblet squat, dropped that weight. I already had the weight set up for my Bulgarians, walked over to the bench, grabbed the weight for the Bulgarians and did eight to 10 reps on my right leg and then eight to 10 reps on my left leg. And then I rested. And then I went back to the goblet squats. And by that, like, I think I only did three sets of this because it's murderous to do this to your legs. But by that third set, I was shaking shaking and panting. It's like so much cardio. So then after that, I did a fun little finisher. It wasn't quite a finisher because I did one more exercise after this, but it was a 30 second wall sit. I just grabbed like a 40 pound medicine ball and throw it on my legs for a little bit of extra weight. So I did a wall sit for like 30 seconds. And then right after the wall sit, you go directly into jump squats. And this is a great power exercise. I love sprinkling in power movements like jump squats, box jumps, anything where you're jumping and sort of exploding upward. I love it. It's a great way to just feel more like a ninja. So I always do that superset wall sits and jump squats. Your quads at this point are on fire. And then I ended on leg extension machine. By this point, my quads were like really, really toast. So I did a very lightweight on this and I just did like two or three sets of higher reps. I did like 15 to 20 reps at a lighter weight just a couple sets to really burn out my quads. All right, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday was a fun one. It was kind of like a push day, I guess you could say, but I sprinkled in some fun functional movements too. Push days are notoriously my least favorite day. That being said, I still wanna train those muscle groups. I don't wanna neglect anybody, but I found that to make it more fun, sprinkling in functional stuff and sprinkling in like some more unique movements just makes it more fun to me. I don't know, keeps it interesting. I started realizing that if I warm up with chest flies, like a lightweight, I'll do really lightweight and just do like three sets of like 15 reps. It is a great activation exercise before I do my bench press. Once I'm warmed up proper properly and I'm activated, I feel it so much more. So then I move into my chest or my bench press and I do like five sets of like six to eight reps on bench. Um, just focusing on trying to keep that barbell in a nice straight line, that barbell path just straight up and down. My elbows are sort of more at like a 45 degree angle. And then I did a standard overhead press. I use a fixed bar for this because it's just easier to go grab. I don't need to take up a whole squat rack. And I typically do like four or five sets of six to eight reps on overhead press as well. And then I did a fun little superset. So we have like monkey bars in my gym. You can use any sort of pull-up bar. Do hanging alternating knee tucks for 30 seconds, jump down from the bar, and then I grab a slam ball, or not a slam ball, it's a med ball because it bounces back. So I grab a med ball and do bent over med ball drives, like a push basically, where you're pushing the ball with your chest. It's a lot of chest and shoulder to push that ball away from you at the ground as hard as you can. And then you lift it back up, slam it back down. Nice neutral spine, your core should be nice and tight, and then you're using your chest and your upper body to push that ball into the ground. Then I grabbed some dumbbells and did a classic just dumbbell bench press. Elbows are more at a 45 degree angle here protects your elbows and your shoulders a little bit more. And I'm just focusing on really using my chest to sort of push and squeeze those weights up. And I do about four sets of like six to eight reps on those. I'm starting to fatigue at this point. And then I do a seated overhead press, dumbbells. This is probably my favorite shoulder exercise, old faithful for me. And I typically do like three or four sets of six to eight reps on this as well. Core is tight, focusing on really driving up using my shoulders and tapping my feet because I'm in pain. And then I did a dumbbell snatch. I love an alternating dumbbell snatch. They're a full body exercise, but after you've been doing so much chest and shoulders, I really feel them in my shoulders because they're already fatigued. So I just alternate right hand, left hand, and I usually set a timer and do it for like a minute. So that's 30 seconds roughly on each side when you're alternating. And then after that, 
directly into CrossFit sit-ups. CrossFit sit-ups are one of my favorite core exercises because I really feel them in every single muscle in my abs. They're like a full abdominal movement for me. Um, you're really crunching all the way. It's like a 180 degree crunch. You really wanna look like a rainbow, just going from one end to the other. All right, Friday, we made it to Friday. Last workout of the week. And this workout was a full posterior chain workout. So it was a little bit of glutes, a little bit of hamstrings, and a little bit of back. Started with conventional deadlifts, my favorite lift of all time. I like conventional more than sumo, and conventional deadlifts just make me so happy. So you'll see I kind of work my weight up. So I usually start with like a moderate weight for me, something that feels like a six out of 10 RPE. And I do just like eight to 10 reps at that. I add on a plate that's more like seven to eight RPE. I then finally get to my working weight, which is like an eight RPE. Um, I need my straps at that point because I have a weak grip. My straps help a lot. And then I do like three or four sets at my working weight. So I usually do one or two warm up sets, then three or four sets at my working weight. And I can only do like five to seven reps at my working weight. Um, but I'm just trying to really kind of come within like one or two reps of failure. I don't want to sacrifice my form, especially with my lower back. It's just not worth it for me. Then I stayed at the same squat rack dropped the weight and did some bent over underhand rows because we're doing posterior chain. And I focus on sort of pinching a pencil, like I said earlier, between my shoulder blades. So you really want to get a full range of motion. That bar is coming to like right below your boobs, a little bit above your belly button. You also want a nice neutral spine and a strong core. For me, it's always form over weight. So I'd rather drop the weight a little bit and get really good form. Then I did some eccentric or some negatives. People call them two different things. They're the exact same thing. Negative, you're basically jumping up into the pull-up position and just letting yourself very slowly release down two sets of three or four, honestly. And these just like light my back on fire. They're so good, so much control. And then, oh, this is such a fun one. This is a very, it's kind of a functional twist on a classic exercise. Barbell RDL but with a band. And RDLs, I have always struggled to feel in my glutes, especially when I do them with a the barbell. Adding a band really helps me pulling my butt forward. So I'm letting my butt go all the way back, trying to touch the wall behind me, and then resisting that pressure from the band to drive my glutes forward as I lift the weight. So it's a really good mental cue, and it also adds just a little bit of intensity to the exercise if you just wanna take it up a notch. I love a long band. Then I did a neutral grip lat pull down. I love these so much more than wide grip lat pull downs. These are like my favorite. And I usually do like four or five sets of eight to 10 reps on these, focusing on really just using my whole upper back, kind of spreading my lats as I pull down. And then I switch back to hamstrings because this is full posterior chain. So I'm just doing seated leg curls. These I always just love. I find these to be so much more effective for hamstrings than lying leg curls. And they just really burn. I usually do like three sets of 15 to 20. So I go a lot lighter on weight, similar to leg extensions, lighter on weight. And I do like three sets of like 15 to 20. So I switched back to back, doing a seated cable row, classic, kind of bending over with the weight to get that nice long stretch in the lats and then pulling back, elbows are right by your side. I imagine that same little pencil that I'm trying to squeeze between my shoulder blades. Core is tight, spine is neutral, no like hunching and scrunching. And I typically do four sets of six to eight reps on this. And then I finished with triceps, which is technically not like a posterior chain exercise. I just was standing in the gym and I realized that I hadn't done triceps that week. So I was like, yeah, I'll just do some triceps. I just did three sets of eight to 10 reps, cable tricep extensions. These burn, my triceps are really weak. And that's the week of workouts. We ended up moving back to the East Coast. I've said this in another vlog, but so spent the rest of the weekend flying, moving. We had to pick up our new car. It's just been a little bit crazy. But that being said, Saturday and Sunday of this week were rest days. So I typically work out like, I would say average five days a week. Sometimes I have weeks where I work out six days. Sometimes I have weeks where I work out four days. You don't need to be working out six days a week. It's more just like if I have a day where I just wanna randomly box or if I wanna do some like light cardio or like, a, you know, if I'm just in the mood to move that day, I will. 
but I'm not doing like six intense workouts a week. I'm always trying to balance like intensity, volume, frequency, and make sure that I'm not overloading my body. Yeah, that was this week's of work, this week of workouts. It's always a tongue twister, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, and if you have any questions, always leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them, but I hope you have a good day and I will see you soon. Bye.